Hello friends, 2020. How are you doing in, in our 2020 year? I just want to take your focus off the current situation perhaps and go back to 1990s. By the way, let me know what had you been doing in 1990, 1990, 1990, 1991, 92, because that's, these are the years where this Shimano 105 1055 group sets was being produced. I was 10 years old and I was riding on uh, some really cheap so-called road bike. I want to show you seven things that were not there 30 years ago uh, and I will, I will be doing it like this. I will show you how was it 30 years ago, then we'll go over to the bike from 2019 and compare the technologies. Not everything has changed, uh, the basic principles have not changed actually, but there are some well, there are some huge improvements. And so my friends, 30 years ago there was no combo shifters. There was the braking lever and there was the shifting lever. So today it looks pretty much like this, right? This was a huge step forward in my opinion because this was the lever that was mounted on the frame. Uh, and because of the uh, routing of the cable, it was on the down chip. So you, you would really need to change the position on your, on your back a little bit to uh, change the gear, like lean down, down to the down chip a little bit. Now everything is hidden here in the, in the uh, shifting combo. So we have the down shifting lever and then in the Shimano system the braking lever is also the shifting lever because there's another pivot and you can move the lever to the sides you can see that in the second but this was a huge huge leap forward uh, really smart design and today all of the companies are, are using different types of such combo just imagine how was it 30, 30 years ago riding in the hill terrain when you had to change the gears like every minute or so. So this was number one. And the shifting combo, this was hugely forward. Braking, shifting, 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 shifting. Uh, of course Shimano, Campy and SRAM will have different systems. This is my uh, favorite, favorite one, the most uh, intuitive uh, I would say everything uh, you can do from the, this grip, from the hoods, riding on the hoods, really really handy, well done, doesn't take too much space, the system is hidden here, this one is uh, with the hydraulic uh, disc brakes, that's why it's a little bit larger, but how it works, I'm loving it. Number two, there was no integrated spindles um, and this is, hmm, you know, doesn't seem like a very advanced technology what we have today, but yes it is uh, and it was big improvement. This is the spindle of the bottom bracket, this goes inside the frame. This is one crank arm and this is the other crank arm with the chain rings. This is so-called square tapered, as you can see it's squared and it was being pushed onto the spindle here. Many disadvantages. More parts, that's number one. High weight, a lot of, this is heavy. This is heavier than a full chain set today with a bottom right. This is much heavier, it really weighs a lot. Shimano 105. Uh, so, um, heavier, also less stiff because today's spindle is oversized. This crank set is also stiffer. The bottom bracket and the frame is stiffer, stiffer then. So less stiffness uh, and also removing the square tapered crank arm from the spindle needs a special removal tool and sometimes it gets stuck and it's difficult to remove. So this was also big improvement. And here I don't have a good example for you because this is the exception. This is one of the best cranks in the world uh, currently uh, and this one doesn't have the integrated spindle. It has the hollow uh, and uh, oversized spindle uh, but the spindle is uh, just like a part for itself. 
it's not integrated either to the right crank arm or the left crank arm. Most of the crank, crank arms today would be integrated with the spindle and the other side uh, would be assembled to, uh, to the spindle. Uh, but less parts, more stiffness, uh, more oversized, much more oversized, everything, the bearings, the spindle, everything, really good stuff. <laughs> the hologram, Canada hologram is an exception, it doesn't have the integrated spindle. And talking on the chain set, there was no hollow crank arms, it was just one piece of uh, material. Today we have the crank arms which are hollow inside, uh, from usually from two parts which are being glued together. Very interesting technology. Uh, the crank arms today are much more oversized, stiffer, better, much lighter. This was not as advanced technology. It worked. It, this group set would be working today. You can ride on it still, no problem. Uh, but less stiffness and more weight, that is for sure. More material here. And for number three, yes, the hologram is a good example because it's a hologram. So it is uh, hollow inside. If we compare the crank arms, you can see that the, the current ones are really oversized. So there is less material inside. There are quite thin uh, walls, I would say, of this uh, like Dura Ace, uh, this hologram, or other maybe carbon um, uh, crank sets, uh, which means less material, but still the stiffness might be even better than than of these ones. So this is the technology uh, that is more time-consuming. It's more expensive, but it's worth it because we have alloy here, for example. So we have the recyclable material but much less than on this one and the performance is great. Now the brakes. Uh, brakes are actually number four and number five that we didn't have 30 years ago. Number four is the disc brakes. We didn't have these brakes uh, on a road bike. We had the rim brakes in different versions but this would be I think the main one. Yeah for sure the main one if not the only one on the road bikes or racing bikes. Uh, so these brakes were not there, number four. But number five, we didn't have the dual pivot, so-called today dual pivot brakes. Uh, I showed you the difference between dual and not dual uh, today. Actually, uh, I call it the symmetrical and non-symmetrical. So this was non-symmetrical. As you can see, this arm, or, sorry, this arm of, of the brake uh, is uh, moving uh, around this pivot which makes, as you can see, oh, the brakes work asymmetrically, which also means that those pads will not push symmetrically against the rim. One of these will go upwards and the other one will go downwards. Of course, there is no such huge movement uh, in the braking, but this um, will lower the braking power a little bit and also uh, the wear of both 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 pads uh, will not be as even or equal on both sides. So today we have another pivot right here. So in this case, more parts than before, uh, but those pads will go really nicely symmetrically towards the rim. So this was number five. I think everybody knows now how the disc brakes look like on the bike. The disc rotor is being assembled to the hub and then the caliper is being assembled to either the fork or the frame at the rear. Uh, we can have hydraulic system, we can have mechanical system. It is uh, very strong, really powerful and as I said we are not wearing down the rim, we are down the rotor only. Good system. Number six is the through axles. We didn't have through axles, we had quick releases. Quick release with a very thin, how do you call this part here? It's not the spindle, the spindle is here. Uh, and this thin part goes through the, the spindle or the axle uh, in, the, in the hub. And then we are locking the wheel with this lever. This system is the, the quickest system for removing uh, the wheel and putting the wheel back uh, onto bike. But especially when we have a lightweight bike, lightweight wheels and we are riding hard or we are heavier riders. 
the through axles uh, really uh, make a difference. The wheel will be more stiff. Uh, with the disc brakes uh, you will feel the difference. Um, also if you have di uh, the rim brakes, such a brakes, with the through axle uh, you might notice that there is less wrap or no wrap between the rim and the, and the brake uh, when you are rocking the bike going off the saddle. So the through axles were not there. And the through axle here is also very uncommon but it's better than on most uh, of the system. But this is a through axle so there's a thread here, right? There's not just a lever but a thread. We need to unthread the axle and in this case we can already remove the wheel. This is, this is really smart design. On most of the through axle systems this would be only like a hole uh, or eyelet in, uh, in the fork or, or, and also in the frame and we would have to uh, put the, uh, the axle through axle through those holes into the thread right here. Uh, in this case we can do it like this. See this is very smart but this is a one, one of the type of the through axles. Just a better one. And the last one we go back to the chain set and the cassette actually I don't have the cassette to show you. We did not have 30 years ago sophisticated shifting systems on the sprockets on the, on the teeth of those chain rings. As you can see these teeth are a little bit smaller than these and that's the main thing that was being done in those years because uh, these teeth uh, are not only taking the chain going from the smaller chain ring to the bigger but they also need to give it up back. That's the main thing and there is some shaping here on, on those teeth but not quite much and there is no upshifting pins so it looks really different from what we have today. And here is the very sophisticated system on the chain rings nowadays. As you can see the height of these teeth is different. Sometimes uh, you people ask on our forum whether, whether or not you have broken the, the, the tooth because you didn't know they just should be different. This tooth for example is lower than most of the other teeth because it will allow the chain to go up to this chain ring and also down uh, to the smaller chain ring. You can see different shape, shapes here. It's almost like each of the, of the teeth is different. This is very sophisticated, this uh, works very well and what you see here and here and here and here are the upshifting areas. Here are these upshifting areas from the other side. One, two, three and four. What these pins do, if you will notice that just before the pin there is also a groove in the bigger chain ring, they will scoop up the chain when it goes from the smaller chain ring to the bigger chain ring. It works perfectly, it, it is very um, crisp, fast and you can uh, even upshift uh, on the load, so while um, pedaling pretty hard. Good system, most of the cranks that today have it. So guys, let me know what do you miss the most on the bicycles of course from the 1990s.